Microsoft AI Builder in Power Automate is so easy. Let me show you how to get started. Or actually, I call the biggest AI Builder expert, Joe Fernandez. Hello, Joe, and welcome to the stream. Maybe you could introduce yourself. Hi, Anders. Yeah, good morning and good, good evening, whatever you are in the world. Uh, thanks so much for having me. Indeed, my, my name is, is Joe Fernandez. I'm a product manager in the AI Builder team, which is part of, of Power Automate. And I'm, I'm super excited to, to hear, to share uh, what, uh, what AI Builder enables you to, to automate you using, using AI. And I just want to say as well, Anders, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, of the work you do on, on how you empower so many people to automate uh, their careers uh, through, through automation. And you even uh, have, so I know some folks who have considered switching careers uh, through, through your videos. So super excited oh, here. Nice. And I hope, uh, I hope uh, this session will be useful to anybody watching this. Thanks a lot, Joe. And welcome to all you viewers out there. This is a session for you. Uh, Joe will show you how easy AI Builder is. We will answer every question you may have. Just post them in here in the live chat and I'll give them to Joe. I'll just probably just sum up every five minutes or so with all the questions. And Andreas uh, is with us uh, from a train somewhere in Sweden. Hello, Andreas. Nice to have you here and nice to have all you other people here. Joe, I know you uh, have a presentation for us and more importantly, a demo. You know, we like demos here on the channel. So uh, I will switch to that. Awesome. Let's 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 get started. Uh, so indeed, as as um, as as you were saying, to so I have some uh, few slides to get started to just give a, a brief overview of, of AI Builder. But indeed, the, the fun part is the demo. So I'll, I'll go quickly through the introduction, so everybody has the same context on what is AI Builder and, and what it fits within uh, Microsoft, and then the best way uh, to see the product and what it's capable of is through a demo. So let's let's do that. And uh, as and as you were saying, Anders will uh, will take questions throughout throughout the presentation. Any any question is is more than welcome. Okay, so uh, AI Builder is part of the Power Platform. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, the Power Platform is Microsoft's low-code, no-code platform, which means that it's a suite of applications that you can use to build uh, digital solutions without having to have technical knowledge, or without having to know how to program, without having to have a background in computer science or data science, they're available for anybody to build these solutions. And we have five big applications. The first one is Power BI, which allows you to build dashboards and, and, and models over your, your data. Power Apps, it's all about building mobile, web, and desktop applications using a very simple interface, uh, as, is, as if you were putting together a PowerPoint. Then we have Port Domain, which I know many of, of, of the viewers here will be familiar and know of. It's, it's our automation, our low-code automation platform. I will see throughout uh, this demo as well how, 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 it, how it works. Then we have Power Retail Agents, which allows you to easily build chatbots, especially like when you think of those chatbots we see in support scenarios. You can very easily build those chatbots and integrate them in a, in a large number of different communication channels. And the most recent member for Power Platform family is called Power Pages, and it allows you to build uh, public-facing as well as uh, internal company-facing websites, again, in a low-code, uh, no-code way. And we have a number of shared components across the platform. The first one is data connectors, which allows you to connect all these applications to more than 700 services. So both, of course, Microsoft, but also uh, third-party non-Microsoft ones. Uh, so you can connect to uh, a very large number of, of data sources. Then we have Dataverse, which is our no-code database, database solution. So if you're looking for a place to store your data and you don't want to uh, take care of or worry about scalability, security, and all that, we have a great solution with Dataverse. And the topic that uh, brings us together today is AI Builder, which is all around uh, easily infusing AI capabilities into your applications and, and automations. Can you if, uh, can you use AI Builder in all these five applications, or is it only reserved to some of them? That's a, that's a very good question. So today it's mainly uh, available through Power Apps and Power Automate. Power Apps and Power Automate is also integrated with the different applications. So you could be a solution, for example, of uh, you could build a, a, a website with Power Pages that every time somebody uploads a document, it triggers a flow with Power Automate and then calls AI Builder. So there are ways to also use AI Builder through other different applications, but you will mainly find it today uh, within Port Automate to add 
AI into your automations and perhaps to add AI into your applications. Cool. And we have a lot of people from around the world here. We have Mariske from South Africa. We have Makil from United Arab Emirates. And then we have Felix from Ghana. Trailers from Netherlands. S from Belgium. Hans Peter from Germany. Edward from uh, South Africa. And we al actually have a question already, Joe. Uh, yes. Is there, is there a free trial of this? Can we uh, get started uh, with this quickly? Yes, yes, that's a very good question. There is a free trial, and, and we'll see. Uh, I'll also share the links uh, throughout the presentation. Uh, if you log in into Port Automate and Port Apps, so both Port Automate and Port Apps have free trials. You can start for, for free with, with those applications. And then, uh, sorry, I don't know what happened here. So, and everything what we see here today, we can get started with that for free. That's uh, important right. to say, right? Yeah, yeah. So AI Builder. So AI Builder is a suite of uh, AI models that you can easily use in your applications and automations, and in a very uh, point-and-click interface, as you can see in the screen, the screenshot, and we'll see also in the in the demo. Uh, you don't need to have a background in computer science or, or data science to be able to to add AI easily uh, to automate a lot of processes. So we have. Um, we have five big categories of AI models today in AI Builder. The first one is around documents, so everything around extracting data from documents. And I'm going to deep dive specifically on this pillar in this in this session today. Then we have also have a category around language, so we all work with a lot of text, whether those are, are emails, or chat messages, and so on. And there's a lot of knowledge in those texts, so we can use AI to extract that knowledge. So we can do things like detect sentiment in a in a customer email, and if for example, the sentiment is negative, give it a higher priority. We can translate text. We can, for example, we have a, a model called category classification, which allows you to, for example, if you receive emails in a shared mailbox and you want to route emails to the right person, you can build a category classification email to understand the content and forward that email to the right subject matter expert to take care of that, of that topic. The third pillar is around images, which is all around being able to detect and count objects within, within images. And last but not least, we also have a pillar around uh, structured data, which is, this is if you have data in, in tables and you want to predict some future outcomes. So for example, you have uh, historical data on your customer sales and you want to predict whether a um, customer is going to churn or not. You can very easily build a prediction model that's going to help you keep, 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 keep those, those insights. So these are the five big uh, pillars of, of AI capabilities that we have today within AI Builder. And if I jump, oops, something funny with my presentation today. Uh, if I zoom into the uh, document uh, aspect part, we have a lot of capabilities around extracting data from documents. We can extract data from structured and unstructured documents. So I'll cover what that means uh, very soon. We have a number of what we call pre built models for common scenarios. So for example, if you work with invoices, we have an AI model that is able to automatically extract all the key information from invoices without having to configure anything. I will see that in the demo as well. You can, you can build your own custom model. So if you have your custom documents and you want to extract specific information from your documents, we have the capability. We support a lot of languages, over 70 languages. We support PDF, images. We can extract tables, complex tables, and, and, and so much more. And then because we are part of, of Portomate, we also benefit from the connectors ecosystem. So you can, um, the AI model gets used just so far. So you're able to extract the data. But then you probably want to do something with the data. So with Portomate, you can do a lot of transformation. And you can push the data over to 700 connectors. And through our RPA capabilities with Power Automate Desktop, you can also push the data to any, basically any, any legacy system or, or desktop running application that there might not be an API connectivity, but you might want to push the, the, the data. And we also have uh, what we call a, a document automation starter kit, which is basically a one-click install solution where you can set up an end-to-end -end process and then easily configure it. And we'll see that as well throughout, throughout the presentation. So some uh, some very quickly some new features before uh, jumping into the demo. Uh, so we recently released support for what we call unstructured documents. So up until recently, AI Builder was optimized for structured and semi-structured documents. So these are documents that always have uh, a same layout. So for example, a tax form, or have for a, a specific uh, uh, layout 
the information is in similar places. So for example, things like invoices, where you can always expect to find the invoice ID somewhere, like a table item somewhere, the total amounts in a specific location. What we now release is support for unstructured documents. So uh, an example of structured document is a contract where every contract is different. There's pages and pages of paragraph, and you want to extract specific information from those paragraphs. Now with AI Builder and using the, the simple interface that we'll see through with the demo, you can very easily uh, build a model to also extract data from this type of unstructured documents. And last, uh, in, last update that we've released recently is uh, now when you tra train a custom document processing model, we're going to give you performance metrics. So that's going to tell you whether the model or not is ready to be used in, a, in an end-to-end -end scenario. If it's not, we're going to give you recommendations on how to improve it. Uh, so uh, our goal with AI Builder is to get you step-by-step -step to build the best model and to get you on how you can uh, once you have that model, how you can improve it over time to, to get the best results and automate as much as possible. Cool job. All right. And I will interrupt you for one second. S. Stout yeah. says uh, hello from Netherlands and a special greeting to Joe. So uh, thank you for that. Nevita says uh, hello from New Zealand. Uh, wow. Nicholas is joining us from France. Um, Scythe is from Turkey, and my wife is even watching. Stina is joining from Denmark. I'm not, I'm not sure where she is. She's not home, so some, probably some cafe or something. Tangar is from Singapore. I have uh, questions for you, but I'll, uh, I'll bring them to you in a little while in the demo. So let's just continue, Joe. Perfect. Yeah, it's awesome to see so many people from, uh, from uh, around the world. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm based in France, so I'm specifically, specifically uh, going to say hello to, to Nicolas in, in France. Uh, all right, so let's jump into a demo. Let's see the product in action. Uh, so this is the homepage of AI Builder, and you can find it if you log in into portomate.com and you log in with a work or school account. You will see the AI Builder section in the left navigation bar. You'll see here uh, our homepage, which is called Explore. And here you can see all the different AI capabilities I was showing in the slides before, uh, organized by different inputs, so documents, text, structured data, and images. And this page also offers so much more. You have uh, tutorials. Um, uh, so if, if you want to get started and you need a little bit more help, we have great tutorials here. I know that Anders, I also you have some very nice videos. I also uh, reference those as well. I mean, the, the, your, your material is also very, very valuable to get started with for Automate and, and, and AI Builder. So that's also some, some great material. Out of uh, these six videos, I would definitely pick number six, I can see that one to the right. <laughs> yes, uh, and then before we go to the video, so we also have case studies. But what we also hear from from our users is that sometimes they want to get inspiration on what they can do with with the AI. And here we've published a number of, of common use cases with our customers. So if you're looking for inspiration on what you can do, you see some case studies here, and we'll explain how to how to build those. Indeed, we also have a, a, a great uh, video gallery. Um, so if you prefer video, I think more, many of the viewers here do prefer video. We also have a good collection of, of videos here. Customer stories. Again, if you're looking for inspiration on how real customers are using AI Builder, you can go ahead and, and look at some of our customer use cases using AI Builder. And then we have a What's New section if you want to catch up on what's the latest updates with AI Builder. You can also see that through um, with, uh, with this page. So let's uh, let's start with documents. Uh, so these are the different uh, AI capabilities we have around documents. So we have a number of what we call pre-built models. So these are models that you can use right away out of the box without having to configure anything. Uh, so um, we have uh, pre-built for invoice, uh, OCR. So if you just want to extract all the data from the text, we have text recognition, receipts, uh, IDs like passports and driver licenses, business cards, and uh, document processing, which is the model that's going to allow you to build a custom AI model to extract the data from any type of, of document. When you click to any of these styles, you get this experience. So you get more information on what you can do with this capability. So here you get an introduction of what the invoice pricing model is able to do. And you can also see some examples. So you can get inspired to, to understand what the AI is able to do. And you can even, and for free, you can go ahead and try with your own invoices. So uh, if you don't trust uh, these, these uh, samples, you can just bring your own real samples and see how they work. So for example, here I have a, I have a fun one, um, which is a totally handwritten invoice. So one of the things that we also support in AI Builder is handwritten text. Uh, so if, if you have a, 
a mix of printed and handwritten, AI Builder is going to be able to recognize that. And here we see an example of a, of a totally handwritten invoice. And we can see that without having to configure anything, AI Builder is able to extract already a good amount of, a good amount of data. And it would if I if I were going to hand handwrite another invoice, it would work with that as well. So it's not that this is a predefined one, right? Definitely, definitely, it's 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 uh, it's going to look for common uh, fields in invoice. It can be any any invoice layout. Yeah. Cool. So let's let's see this uh, in 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 action. Let's see how we build an automation through this. So uh, if you want to use invoice, we are by using a flow button here. So you click on it. And we're going to tell you, we're going to take you to a pre-built for automate flow template. So this is an end-to-end -end automation uh, already built for you that they can you can then customize. Uh, so we give you a, a simple example so you can get inspired on on the possibilities, but then you can customize it to to whatever you need. So we'll start with a very simple example where basically uh, we're going to trigger an automation by clicking a button. It's going to ask us for an invoice file. And then it's going to extract all the data from the invoice or uh, some of the data elements. And it's going to send me an email with, with those, those elements. So very simple automation, but with, it's a great way to just see the whole end to end working and then uh, get some confidence and, and be able to customize it. Then because this is for automate, uh, you can then add any actions. So these are, we have over 700 connectors. So you can then customize it. Let's say that you want to, to push the data into Excel or push the data into a SQL database or, or anything you can think of, you can. If we have a, a connector for you to be able to, to achieve this. So uh, I'm not going to modify anything in this first example. I'm just going to save it and, and run it to see to see how it works. So I just click save on the top right, and once the flow is safe, I'm going to be able to click on the on the test menu. So let's go ahead and click test, and because it's a manual button, I'm going to click manually, and then it's going to confirm. It's just going to confirm that uh, all my credentials are okay. And then it's asking me, OK, I need an invoice file. So let me pick another invoice. Let me pick uh, this one here and run flow. And these things would happen automatically if I were going to process these things in my company, right? Correct. So what, what, what you're going to do, so this is a very simple example where you need to uh, manually trigger the, the automation. But you could change the trigger to, for example, every time I receive an email, I want this to happen. Or every time somebody adds a new file into a folder, I want this to happen. Uh, so yes, you can you can customize it. So, so for every event, every time a new invoice is received at your company, uh, trigger this this automation. Cool. So this simple flow has run. So if I go to my inbox here, I see that I receive an email, and I can see if I open the the invoice, I can see that uh, uh, all the data has been extracted, the, the invoice ID, the invoice date. Uh, we also do a, a number numerization. So we're going to provide you, for example, for dates. We're going to give you the date as it is written on the invoice. But we're also going to give you in a standardized format, so it's also easier to then work, work, work with them. Similar with the with the numbers, with the with the amounts. So we're going to give you the total as it is reading in the invoice, as well as a normalized value in the in the in the format. And something we've also included in the in this template is if you want to once you have run that, and if you want to learn a little bit more, we also give you a documentation link so you can go ahead and learn how to take it to the next the next level. Wow, dude, that's cool. That's uh, very, very easy to process uh, an invoice. Like, and in, we could do it in two minutes. Definitely. So, talking about the uh, next level, let's do something a little bit more, more complicated. Uh, so, in this case, uh, let's imagine that uh, we work at a company and we receive these documents, which are sales orders. And, and every time we receive these sales orders, uh, somebody scans them and put them into a SharePoint folder here. And then what I want to do is every time a new file is here, I want to add the data into this Excel file. And then I want to also write this data into this uh, legacy old looking uh, website. And today I do this manually and it takes me a lot of time because I receive hundreds of these sales orders per, per month. I want to be able to automate this so I can do more more interesting uh, things throughout, uh, throughout my day. So let's see how we can use AI Builder and, and automate to, to achieve this. So we're back to AI Builder. And in this case, um, so these are sales orders. So we don't have yet uh, a pre-built model for sales orders, but that's no problem because we can go ahead and build our own model to extract the data from, from our own documents. So this is called document processing. So I'm going to click on it here. And again, we have the familiar experience. Uh, go ahead, Anders. So a custom model is that when, when we have our own data, just to repeat what you said or uh, to understand it correctly? 
Correct. Is is when when you have uh, when you have your own documents um, and you want to build a custom model to extract the data you need from your own documents, you go with mm -hmm. the custom one. If uh, if you have one of the pre-built that we support, so invoice or receipt, for example, you can get started with this. If it works, then just stick stay with the pre-built. It's going to be easier. It's just going to, as, as we showed them before, like in, in in basically two minutes, you can have it up and running. If you need additional information from, for example, from an invoice, or you have a totally different document. You can go ahead and build your own uh, custom document version model. So, for example, if if the, the invoice was in Spanish, like you speak, or if it was in in Danish, like I speak, uh, we will we will create a custom model for those ones, or could they work w within the predefined one? So that's a that's a that's a very good point. Uh, so thanks for, for raising that one. Um, so today, the pre-built invoice processing works with uh, English invoices from the US. Mm -hmm. But the good news is that next month we're going to uh, massively expand to basic, basically all the main European languages. So French, Spanish, German, Italian, um, Portuguese, Dutch. Uh, I think I, I don't know if I forgot uh, any other. And to um, the viewers out there, uh, Joe didn't ask me to ask this question. This was a question coming from myself. So uh, that's really nice to hear, Joe. Looking forward for that. Definitely, that's that's also the 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 the, the, the beauty of, of of AI builder and and build uh, and being a cloud service is that we do update the service regularly, uh, so you can expect these models to just get get better over time and add support for more languages and, and more markets. Yeah. Cool. cool. Um, so yeah, let's let's see how we build our own custom uh, model. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. And when I click on get started. We're going to enter into what we call uh, a wizard experience. So it's going to guide me step by step to build my, my model. Uh, and the first thing that the wizard ask, is asking me is what type of document? Is it a structured document or a, or a non-structured document? Which, uh, as we were saying before, structure is, is, is a new type of, of document type that we support here. Uh, in this case, because um, this, they do have a sense of structure. So we see that uh, there, is, there is a table. There are a number of elements here. Uh, these are uh, these are these are semi-structured document. So I'm going to click semi-structure. Let's move to the next step. And then the second step is going to ask me what information I want the model to extract. And I can define to extract fields, to extract checkboxes, and also to extract uh, tables. So let's do a, a number of fields. Uh, let me go ahead and define a number of fields. So uh, let's do, for example, the sales order number. I also want to extract uh, what is the vendor of the sales order. So I'm going to define this as a field. I also want to extract the total amount. There's also, I believe, in, in, in one of the providers here, uh, there's a checkbox to uh, specify if it's priority shipping or not. So let me also define a, a checkbox so we can know if, if the shipment was done in a priority way or not. So priority, priority shipping. And then we also want to extract uh, some of the data from the tables. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, and uh, define a table. And let's give it a name. So we can call it, for example, items. And then we can define which columns I want to extract. Uh, I don't want to extract all the columns. I just want to extract a subset of columns. So I'm going to do, for example, the, the description we want to extract, the part number. Let's do also the unit price and the total price. Oops, let me write that correctly. All right, uh, done. Um, any any questions at, at this moment, Anders? Uh, no, but I want to say to all you people out there, if you uh, like these sessions with uh, experts like Joe, you can give the video a thumbs up. That will help the channel a lot. We can get Joe and this channel out to more people. So um, yeah, back to you, Joe. Definitely, yeah. Uh, OK, so we've said that uh, our document is of type semi-structure. We've defined a number of data I want to extract. Then let's move to the next step. And here's going to ask us to upload sample documents. So the model needs to learn from some sample documents. And the way we upload documents is through collection. And collections are basically a group grouping of documents that have the same layout. So for this demo, I have two providers. I have Adatum here and Contoso, and they have two different layouts. So I'm going to go ahead and define two separate collections. So I'm going to start with the first one, and I can give it a name. Let's say I'm going to upload here sample documents from Adatum. 
and I can upload documents either from a local device, from a SharePoint site, or also from a from Azure Blob, uh, Blob storage. So we'll see this, that appearing soon. There we see, so I can upload from a device, SharePoint, Azure Blob storage. So I'm going to pick, pick my device. I have here for that tomb, I have five sample documents. And five are, ju are just uh, what you need. So if you have five sample documents, cool. you can get started to, to build your own custom model. I have a question very related yeah. to these things here. Uh, the viewers, they definitely want to try this out after the session. Uh, can we get these invoices somehow to so we can try it? Definitely. So let me open here. If uh, there's also a, a link on the on the on the homepage we were looking before, but if you go to the AI builder documentation uh, in the guest study section, we have a sample data uh, section here, and here you can download sample documents. So here we, we give you samples of both uh, structure, semi structure, and structure documents. So you can try all different uh, document types even here. And if you want to explore also the other AI capabilities, so for example, if you want to explore what we're able to do around object detection or text, we also have a lot of sample data for different AI model types. Cool. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, good question. OK, so we've uploaded five samples from the first provider. Let's upload another five samples for the, our second provider. So I'm going to repeat the same process. I'm going to, this time, it's uh, Contoso. So let me take these five here. Okay, and I can also give it a, a name so it's easy, easy to reference. Okay, so third step completed. We've uploaded uh, five sample documents for each of the providers we want to, to automate. And then what is left is I need to uh, teach the model where to find all this, all this data. So the um, AI builder is not going to show me uh, all the sample documents that I've uploaded. And basically what I need to do here is to go ahead and tell, okay, these are all the data I want to extract. To, I just need to tag uh, what, uh, what where the different elements are. So the tag is very simple. I just have to click on, on each item and say, okay, this is the sales order number. I can zoom a little bit so it's easier to see. The vendor, I can do this. So this is atom industry. And, and we can see even if it's uh, a part of a logo, I can also or, or can also tag this. So add that to total amount. It should be around here. So let me go ahead and tag the total amount. And then for the, for the table, uh, I just basically have to draw a rectangle, a rectangle around the area. Yeah, maybe I just did a little bit more here. It specify that this is the items table. And then basically I need to draw the separations between row and columns. So I'm just going to draw, so in this case we have two rows and we have a number of columns. So let me go ahead and define those here. And then so I what you're doing here, Joe, um, is uh, showing AI Builder uh, the structure of these documents. And then uh, you do that for uh, five documents. And afterward, uh, the AI Builder would be able to automate the things without uh, us have to look or click somewhere. Is that right? Correct. Indeed, indeed, indeed. It's, 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 it, this is an initial process where we teach the model okay, uh, about our documents, uh, where to find the information. Once I've done that, uh, then the model will have learned and it will be due for any future documents uh, for us automatically. Cool. So I've tagged the columns, I've tagged the rows, so now I just have to define uh, where what it, each column corresponds to. Uh, so here is the unit price, here is the, the total price. And here we have an interesting case where uh, we have we want to extract the description and also the, the part number. Uh, so I'm not able to here to tag both because they're both in the same column. But uh, even though AI Builder is in it, no code, as you can see, we also give you all the tools to go as as complicated as you need. So we have an advanced mode where basically, if I if I toggle here the advanced mode, I can just go ahead and and really fine tune what I want to extract. So here I can say, okay, the description is just this part here, and the part number is this part here, and I'm going to do that for the second row as well. So this is the description here, and the part number, and I'm done. And uh, if I go here and click uh, preview table, I can see that uh, this is how the table is going to be extracted, which is how I want it. I want the description in one column and the part number in one in another column. So even though in the document they're all in the same column uh, as in terms of layout, I can decide how the model learns to extract all these this information. Cool. And then the the last item is the priority shipping checkbox. In this case, so for this provider, Alatu, there's no checkbox around priority shipping. Uh, but that's not a problem. What I can say is, hey, for uh, 
for this collection you won't be you won't find this this field so just don't look for it so i can i can define a number of fields but not all the fields need to be present across all the documents if one field is not present i can just say hey don't don't look for this field in in this document so i would do this for the rest of the documents in atom let me just do one more for the second collection so for the collection Again, here it's, it's a different layout that just have to teach the model where each of the items are. So I'll see here the list. So I just have to uh, say that this is a sales order. The vendor is here, Contoso, total amount, tables. I will repeat the same process. So I select area here, items. And again, I just draw the separations between rows and columns. And this table is easier since there's no nested item. Uh, I don't need to switch to, uh, to advanced mode. I, just, I can just. Uh, Tag all the different. Uh, um, Can you repeat what the, was the nested item again? Yes. Uh, so in this case, there's no nested item, so every column is clearly separated. So there's no there's no issue. If we go back to the previous collection, to the to the other two collection, um, let me again. We see here that let me zoom here. We see here that the part number is nested within the description. So within the yeah. same column, I have, two, I have two things I want to extract. I want to extract the description and part number, but I want to extract them separately. So through the advanced mode, we can we can do that. Cool. And then uh, just the document that we were doing before. Uh, so we do have a checkbox here. So a checkbox is also very simple. I just draw uh, around the area. It tells me that the checkbox is checked. I say that it's priority shipping. And I'm good to go. So I would, I would do this process uh, through the five documents. And once I, I've done, I've tagged all the documents, I can go ahead and train my my doc, my model. I, I won't do that to, to speed up the demo to don't to so you don't have to watch me tag uh, all these all these documents. I, I, I've trained uh, the same model with the same documents. Mm -hmm. And this is what happens. And here I have a question, Joe. Yeah. When we see these, uh, these are scores to see how accurate our model is, but what is a good score? What is a bad score? When should we retrain our model? Can you elaborate a bit on that? Definitely, very, very good question. So indeed, so after you train a model, you're going to land into this page and we're going to give you this, this score. Uh, this is the indication. So excellent. Uh, we are confident that uh, you can take it to a production environment and, and it, will, it will do a, 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 very, a, very, a very good job. Good is it's, uh, you probably want to uh, add a few more documents, but it should be good to go uh, uh, to also using it in an end-to-end -end process. Uh, there might be some exceptions, so you might want to put some obsession processing in place where, if, for example, you press a document and there's a low confidence, uh, you might want a human to review that before pushing the data into another system. Anything before good, so anything before, uh, anything below, sorry, 90%, we probably want you to uh, add more, more documents. So uh, it probably means that the model is not very confident that it's going to do a good job. And you will see, so in this case, everything has a very good score. Uh, but if there was something with a bad score, you will see that uh, when I click in more details, uh, it's going to give me uh, for each field and for each table uh, the accuracy score. And if there was a, a low accuracy score, it will tell me, OK, for example, imagine that sales order number had a low accuracy score. It will, I will, will, will tell you here that, hey, you might want to uh, edit the model add more documents for the sales order number, and tag more and more documents with, with many things in AI. The more data you bring, uh, the better the AI is going to get. So uh, the recommendation probably will be uh, we're not very confident how to extract the sales order number. So just come back uh, to the model, add more documents, tag more samples, and 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 that will be it. Or another possible way that we also see is that sometimes um, you might have tagged the sales order wrongly in one document, uh, and the way so the model is confused, like hey, like at some point the sales order uh, completely changed. So you also might want to go go back and review that everything has been tagged correctly. But here we will in this in this screen because everything is green. I don't see any recommendation. But if there was any low accuracy score, we will then give you recommendations on how you can improve the model to get to the to green state. So to to recap your question, if it's green, uh, it's good to go. And anything that is not green, you might want to uh, review and and either add more documents or review that the tagging has been done correctly. Cool. Thank you. And then to if to edit the model is very simple. So if, if you need to make changes, you just click on edit the model and you go back to the training wizard that we saw that we saw before. Can you share so, models across teams? You can share. So that's an excellent question as well. Uh, you can share. So today you can share the model uh, with people in your company. Uh, mm -hmm. Indeed, like across team within your company to to use it. 
uh, today there can only be with there is one limitation that you can there can only be one model owner and uh, but this is something that we're working on to also address in the in the, in the coming months so you also be able to have multiple owners in, in for a single model but if you want to share your model with many people in the company to use it in automation processes you can you can already do that through the share panel yes cool so a couple of more things you can do in this page so you can test it so once probably uh what we also recommend is uh, Aside from looking at the crisis score, you want to test uh, whether the model works or not. So we have this quick test feature, which allows you to basically uh, take a document that you did not use for training. So it's important that uh, you use a, a document that, that was not part of the training set. And uh, you just upload it here. And we're going to be able to see what the model is able to extract. And also, it's going to give us the confidence score for each, each of the items. So we see that uh, it's able to extract credit the vendor, uh, the sales order number. And we can see that the confidence, the confidence score is very high. We can also verify that the table is extracted the way we want it to be extracted. So everything is good. Uh, so I can, I can then go ahead and, and use my model in a, in an end-to-end -end automation. If, if if I were to get uh, bad results, then what I probably want to do is go ahead, uh, edit the model, and add more samples to improve the model uh, over time. Good. So uh, to recap, so we started this journey because uh, we have this uh, issue of, or not issue, but we have this process where we receive these sales orders. Uh, we add them into uh, the into a SharePoint folder, and we want that every time a new file is added into the SharePoint folder, we want to extract the data, uh, write the data into Excel, and then write the data into this legacy website. Uh, so we now have the AI model that does the job to extract the data. But now we need to push the data. So for that, we're going to use the model. So I'm going to click here and use model. And there's a number of ways we can use the model. One is through Power Automate. So we have a number of pre-built templates for common scenarios. You can also use your model in a Power App. So if you if you want like a more, imagine that you want to build a tablet application where somebody can take a, a picture of a document and see all the data from the document, you can very easily build that using a, using a Power App. Or we also have what we call our document automation solution, document, document automation starter kit, which is basically an end-to-end -end solution, uh, which includes a validation station that you can put in place in, a, in, in also in a, in a few minutes. For this demo, I'm going to pick uh, Portomit. So I'm going to pick uh, build uh, an automation using Portomit, and here we see some common scenarios that, that we see among among our users. Uh, so documents, it's going to ask me where where are the documents coming from. They can come from a uh, an Outlook account, a share mailbox, a SharePoint library, a OneDrive, or of course, uh, there's another option. If you have any other source of data, we can also support that with, with Protomint. In this case, our use case for this demo is SharePoint. So full uh, sales orders are added to SharePoint. So I'm going to pick a SharePoint document library. And here is going to take me to, again, a pre built template uh, already set up for me. Uh, so here's give me a description of, of what the template does. It's just making sure that I do have access to all the services. So I have access to, to Outlook and, and SharePoint. And once that is verified, I can go ahead and, and proceed to the next step. Cool. And to the people out there, if you don't have a SharePoint, if you, for example, have a school account, you can use OneDrive, OneDrive here as well. That will work exactly the same way. Correct. Yeah, indeed. Um, so here we have the, the Portomid flow already set up for us. Um, the first step is what is going to trigger the flow? In this case, every time a new file is, is added to a folder, it's asking me some form additional information. So it needs to know, okay, what SharePoint folder is this going to be? So I'm going to specify, we have here a, a SharePoint site called Northwind Traders. And within this SharePoint site, we have a folder specifically to uh, store the search orders. I'm going to pick that here. Then we have some, uh, the second step is just some, some guidance on how to use this template. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through it. So don't, know, don't need to read this today. Uh, then the next step is to call the AI Builder model that we just trained, and it's already set up. So it's already set up to the to AI Builder model that is trained. And uh, what it needs is to what type of document it is and the actual document. And this is something that uh, SharePoint is giving us back. So it's giving it's going to return that is a PDF and the actual content of the of the form. You can also do also for for more advanced users uh, just to show you. You can also configure to only uh, analyze specific pages. So for example, you have a, a hundred page document and the content is only in the first three pages. You can just uh, speak to uh, the first three pages to be analyzed. And that way the process is gonna be easier. And you're also gonna be, uh, you're gonna save money in, in, in the process. And then this template is, is very, is very easy, easy as well. It just sends me uh, the data back into an email 
this is not what we want to do. So I'm going to just, I'm going to just going to remove these steps, and we're going to add the steps that we all actually want to do. So first step, we want to push the data into Excel. Uh, so let me go ahead and add a new step. Here we see all the different connectors that we have out of the box for Protomate, and we can see that there's one for Excel. So I'm going to pick this one. And what we want to do is to add a row into a table. So I'm going to select the add a row into a table action. And again, here it's going to ask me a number of questions. So what is the Excel file? Uh, in this case, it's again, it's on my SharePoint uh, folder. So let me go ahead and pick the Northwind Traders uh, SharePoint site. Uh, where is the folder? Uh, documents. Where is the file? Uh, it's here. So sales orders Excel. And if, if I have multiple tables, it's going to ask me, okay, in which table should I insert the data? In this case, I just have one table, the Excel file. And now it's going to show me all the columns that I need to fill. So when I click on each column, for Automate shows me all the data that is extracted by the model. So we, we of course, uh, give you back the, the values, but you can also do things like confidence score. So something that you users use confidence score for is you can put conditions to say, hey, if the confidence score is below 75%, mm -hmm. I want to trigger a, a manual alert so somebody reviews the document before I push the data into Excel or any, any other system. Joe, uh, one second. I think uh, your connection lags a bit, so not not a bit, but I'll just uh, re uh, re um, refresh your desktop, and then I will take some questions because I can definitely hear you. But um, so I'll just do this. Yes, do that. Yeah, just, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, uh, what we want, we take some questions, and then we come back to to the demo. So um, perfect. And and to all you people out there, thanks for all the great questions. We will uh, take them as they come. And the S is saying, is it possible to uh, custom with some JS CSS? To JS CSS, so I meant JavaScript CSS? Uh... Yeah, to custom the, I'm sure you mean the AI models. Is, can we custom them with some code? I believe that what's meant otherwise, uh, correct us, yes. Okay, so uh, to build the model, so it's, it's how we saw, so it's using that 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 uh, interface so point and click so uh, no 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 need to write to write code mm -hmm. if you want to do uh, something uh, more complex so let's say that you will, once you extract the data you want to transform it in a specific way and so on you can do that through Portomate. so here uh, i'm just adding like simple actions like excel and we'll also see if i push the data but if you are a professional developer you can for example call uh, any http service so you can say hey i have a service hosted in azure or any other public cloud or anybody will have an http connection you can basically uh, call any any advanced endpoint endpoint and and do any transformation with, with code so there, there is extended if you need to uh, have a, a code service and you want to call that code service there are some ways today to, to do that yes Cool. And to the people out there, just let me know if it's my uh, screen. Can you actually see Joe search? Uh, did, did you, could you see Joe search for that HTTP? Uh, because I can see it in a small window, but not in a big one. Let me know in the chat, please, and then uh, we'll get back to that. Uh, Nivita, uh, we have a lot of great questions, Joe. So, uh, uh, Nivita, looking for multi page support in document processing. Uh, how long will he or she look? Very, very, very good question. So, multi page. So, if the document if you have a document with fields that, uh, so we have a multi-page document that have fields that is supported today. Uh, so you can process a uh, uh, lot of pages in, in with, with, with the AI Builder. Uh, probably the question is around uh, multi, so tables that span across multi-pages. Uh, so that's also a common ask from, from our users. Today, we do have an experimental feature. Uh, I probably, have, if you recall, uh, when we got through the wizard and we were in the step where we defined the data, there was an option to extract single page tables. And multi-page tables that one is experimental which means that uh, we know it works for some cases and for some others we still need to, to do a little bit more more work the good news is that uh, that multi-page table is going into a stable state uh, in, in basically in, in november so in, in in a few months from now so you can expect to see some some great improvements in this area in in, in fairly shortly it appears you are on point what uh, me and the viewers uh, we demand. So uh, another feature that will get implemented uh, right around the corner. Joe, yeah. it appears that it was only uh, me who couldn't uh, see you up at the screen. So my bad uh, to you, Joe, no uh, and to the viewers. But uh, uh, Salis says hello from Turkey. And uh, Felix says hopefully some new knowledge. I, I already got a lot out of that. Stina says nice office. 
Um, Prakash says hello from India. Now we have a, another question and hello to all you viewers out there. Thanks a lot for joining. Mm -hmm. We have a question here. Can we build, does this pack have intelligence to identify different values from ideas where the data is not consistent? Can we, and again, can we mask the confidential info? Good, good question. So with the new support, so with uh, the unstructured capabilities that we released fairly shortly, now you can build a custom model to extract data from documents, uh, which are very unstructured. So where data can be uh, all over the place from one document to another. So that, uh, so that is definitely something that, that uh, we can look into. In terms of masking uh, custom uh, personal information, um, we don't have a service to do that today within within AI Builder. So what we ask you is, if you don't want to train models with custom with uh, confidential information, you can just generate a copy of that PDF and mask that, that confidential information. So so we don't don't look at it. Another way to do it is if you want to train the model but you just don't want to extract the data. Here you could add a step to uh, uh, remove that data. So you can say, hey, for for every time you receive a, a, a I don't know. Uh, a customer name and you don't want to store that you can just discard it so you're so you're, so you're not uh, you don't have to store that, that data anywhere um so the, there are ways so uh, today uh what what you bring is what we're going to extract so we don't we don't remove any data from from your documents but it's then up to you once you have that model you can then decide if you want to use the data or if you want to discard it and don't save it anywhere so that there are ways to uh, yeah, to to not to not uh, use uh confidential information that you don't want to push anywhere Cool. We will take one more question and then we're back to, to your demo. Um, and uh, Eric from Portugal, RPA consultant, says, hello, hello, Eric. Nice to have you here. And then the last question before we continue the demo, that is, um, Satka says, can the exported data from the PDFs also be put into uh, an XML, XML file? This way we could automate invoices in our company. Definitely. So that there are, there are some there are some steps here indeed to uh, to transform the data from here into into XML. Uh, so that, that there is a there is a possibility as well. Yes. Cool. So back to the demo, Joe. And cool. we will take and I will uh, make sure that Joe will answer each and every question a little bit later in the session. So just keep all the great questions coming. Definitely. Uh, so in this case, we're not saving the data to XML, we're just saving the data to, to Excel. So uh, I, I've added here the step to add the data into, into Excel. And when I click on each of the columns of the Excel file, uh, Portomate shows me all the data extracted by, by uh, AI Builder. So I can just go ahead and map what has been extracted to the Excel file. Uh, so in this case, uh, the search order number value is here. I want to map the vendor, so if I search for vendor, and again, uh, so for each data, we give you a lot of information. We give you um, the actual value. We also give you the confidence score if you want to build conditions around that. We also even give you the, the page number and the, and the location. So if you want to do more advanced things, or, or like, is it is this field on this page or not? You can also you can also do that. Uh, in this case, I just want to show the values. I'm going to map the different values to a different columns. So let me do that real quick. Total amount value, uh, priority shipping. This, this is the checkbox, uh, priority shipping value. And then these are the three columns from the table. Uh, so I'm going to search for them. So description. And what happens here, if I, if I click on description value, Portomate knows that this is an actual table. So it's going to put the data into an apply to each tool. So it's going to automatically loop through different rows without me having to configure anything. So that's, that's, uh, that's, that's very nicely done for me by Portomate. Let's do that the same for the part number. And last, the quantity. Uh, quantity value. There we have it. Uh, OK, so right now, where we are. So we have an automation that every time we add a new file into a folder, it's going to pick that file. It's going to extract the data using the AI Builder custom model that we trained. And then it's going to push the data into, into Excel. So we have one last step missing, which is uh, we need to push the data into this uh, legacy website. So of course, because these are on our website, there's no API connectivity. So there's no uh, connector out of, out of Portamid that, that I can use. But that is no trouble. We do have, uh, and I know that many of, of your viewers are also familiar with, we do have Portamid desktop, which allows you to build RP automation. So basically replicate what anybody will do in a screen with, with point and click and, and keyboard. And what I've done is I've built with Protomate Desktop 
uh, a desktop flow to basically take uh, all this information and push it into 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 the website. Uh, so I, I I won't show the process of making that desktop flow, but I'm just within this flow I'm going to be able to call the desktop flow that I have already built. So I'm just going to say I'm going to want I want to run a, a flow that I've built with Protomate Desktop. I've done a number of automations. So the one we want to use for this demo is the one that enters the data into the website. Uh, we have, and uh, many of your viewers might be familiar with this term, so attended, unattended. So attended is I want to belong to the machine and see the process running. And unattended is I want if I if I don't need to be logged into, into the, the machine. In this case, because the demo, I want to see it running. So I'm going to pick the attended mode. Mm -hmm. And then as, as it was in the case of the Excel file, it's going to ask me, OK, uh, the, the RPA desktop flow is going to push this data. Just tell us uh, where, where what this data is. So again, I'm going to map what is returned by the AI video model into the desktop flow uh, action. So again, I'm going to go ahead and map the different values. So let me do that real quick. And everything we see here today, we can build ourselves uh, after the session, right? Definitely, yeah. Uh, so there's, there's uh, as we were saying at the at the beginning of the session, there are free trials for everything. So for Port Automate, Port Automate Desktop, AI Builder, so you, you can replicate the same demo today for for free. Um, yeah. And, and and we do have so in the in the AI Builder documentation, we have sample data of the documents. So if, if you don't have documents and you want to use the, the sample data from the from those documents, uh, feel free to also download them from the from the AI Builder documentation page. All right, so uh, we've built our first version of, of our automation. So uh, again, uh, new files come to SharePoint. We extract the data, we push into Excel, and we run the desktop flow. So let's see it running. I'm going to click save. I will. Uh, I will uh, disable our picture. So. Uh, not working. I Sorry. Need to guide no, it was just um, I figured that I disabled your picture and then uh, disabled the sound as well, so that wasn't really clever. So we'll just see it in, uh, like this. No worries. That uh, that uh, happens. Uh, <laughs> that, that that proves that this is live. It's not. Uh... <laughs> no, no, no. We are running it live. <laughs> uh, okay. So now what Portomate is asking me is okay to see the flow running. I need to add a file into SharePoint. So let me switch back to SharePoint. And let me mm -hmm. push uh, one data. So let me take uh, from the Contoso collection. Let me take this one, for example. I'm going to read it here. OK, uh, a file has been uploaded. So let me go back to the flow. So now we should start seeing in a moment, we should start seeing the, the flow running. There it is. It has picked up the, the file from SharePoint. Now uh, the Airbnb model that we train is extracting the data from the SharePoint folder. And once it does that, it will push the data into, into Excel. And then uh, an RPA bot will take control of my machine and enter the data into, into a website. So now it's entering the data into, into Excel. Mm -hmm. And I'll switch back to Excel shortly so we can see it. Uh, we can see it. OK, mm -hmm. let me switch to Excel. There it is. There you go. There's three, three rows in the, in, the, in, the, in the PDF, so you can insert them. Mm -hmm. And now, if I switch to, uh, so I have here a virtual machine that has a port on my desktop configured. Mm -hmm. So now, at, at any moment, um, yeah, an RPA bot will take control of, of this machine and, and enter the data into into the website. Uh, they will have it. So I'm not uh, I'm not touching my keyboard. Or, <laughs> um, and, and there it is it's entering it's entering the data into into the site. Nice. And that's it. So it's uh, in this case we just did one uh, one document. Uh, so so it was very simple. But you can imagine if, if I receive a hundred of documents, the time I would save doing this is, is quite significant. So that I can then do uh, other more more fun things that just entering data into into Excel and into into a legacy uh, into a legacy website. That's so nice, Joe. So so yeah, that was uh, the, that was the demo. Uh, I hope uh, I hope this gave some ideas and some uh, some inspiration on, on the possibilities of Port Automate and, and AI Builder. And Definitely, we, and we do have time. So happy to take additional questions or, or discuss cool. any other topics that the audience might want. 
I will uh, bring all the questions. So if you out there have a question for Joe, just bring it and uh, put it in the chat and I will ask. So the first question, Joe, is that can we use these models by going into the AI builder over to the left and then using a flow? But could we call uh, a model directly from a flow? Like could I create a flow and then call the model? Definitely, it's, yeah. You can, you can, you can. At any time, you can uh, just uh, start from scratch. Let's just quickly start from scratch a model, mm -hmm. and then uh, when you when we have a new step, we have all the connectors. And uh, AI builder is actually the, the the second connector here on the list. So here we see all different AI models mm -hmm. that we can extract, and and we can pick any AI builder model that we want from from here. So yes, you, you don't need to start from the from the AI builder page. You can start right away from the from the flow editor. And that is once you have built it. So you build it in, in the AI builder and then you can always use it in your flows uh, yeah. as much as you want. Cool. Yeah. Um, and now uh, take all the questions now. Uh, we have, um, Nivita says, I've customized your manual flow, an instant flow that was a guide I made uh, with AI builder. It's working fine, but not for multi-page, but you already covered that question. Multi-page support will be available just around the corner. Yeah. Cool. And. Uh, we know that, Nuita, so that will... As Doubt says, Dutch, question mark, I think I called you uh, Dutch. Sorry about that, Doubt, if you weren't Dutch. Um, then we have Steen, that's my wife. She, said, she asked, do you have a pre-built model for KYC procedures? So we have today, uh, we have uh, what we call the identity document reader. And, and here it's basically it's able to extract uh, data from passports and driver licenses. So we do see uh, for not your customer scenarios, we have customers that are, that are using this capability uh, to, yeah, to to extract. Uh, so one one common use case is, for example, you have a process where you need to you need your customers to upload up an an, an ID to be able to verify uh, a, a sign up process. You can basically use this model to extract all the information from the ID and check that what has been entered corresponds to what's on the ID. So yes, with, you, with the ID document, uh, uh, we can use it for Know Your Customers uh, scenarios. Thank you, Stine. See you later for coffee. And thank you, Joe, for answering. OK asks, uh, what languages does it support? So it depends on the on the so the 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 Airbuilder UI is translated in over forty two languages. So I, so if uh, right now we're seeing in English, but uh, you can change the language of Porto Mate and you will see it in in your own language. It depends also the the depends on the model type. So some models support more languages than others. Uh, the way to to see that is basically if you um, if you click on any of the models, let's say that uh, you want to learn about uh, the custom model document pricing, there's a view documentation link that will take you to the every documentation. And for each of the model types, we give you, uh, there's a requirements and limitation section. And here you can see the list of, of languages. So for example, for, for um, the custom model, we support a lot of languages that you can see here. Um, if we look at another model type, so if we do, for example, the invoice pricing that we were discussing before, Today, we uh, we only support um, uh, English, but as we were saying as well before, uh, in, in a month from now, we're also supporting all the main European languages. Uh, so here, here in the documentation, you can see uh, for each model type what languages we support. Cool. Thank you, Joe. Um, Mikel says, what if the PO has multiple pages? Again, there will be multiple page support in, uh, in the very, very soon. And this is a question, actually, a, a great question now from MD uh, asks, will we get to see a similar similar OCR CV in Power Automate Desktop? So can we call this AI builder from Power Automate uh, for desktop? Ah, that's or will we good. see it in the future? That is a very good question. Uh, so today, what is possible is uh, from a cloud flow. So uh, there's two type of flows in Power Automate. There's cloud flows, so the one that we built for the demo. And there's desktop flows, the one that you build with Proto desktop. Um, so within a cloud flow, as you can call, uh, I think I closed the, the the flow, but you can call a desktop flow from a cloud flow. Uh, so that mm -hmm. we see a lot of customers do. From a desktop flow today, you cannot call uh, uh, an AI builder model, uh, but there is something that is that is on the roadmap. I think uh, we recently announced that uh, uh, SharePoint Actions are now available in Proto desktop. So you mm -hmm. can expect to see more uh, cloud actions like 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 uh, builder coming to Proto and stuff as well in the in the future. So yeah, that is um, that nice. is coming. Looking forward, all uh, us uh, Power Automate for desktop developers definitely look forward for that, uh, Joe. Um, S asks, um, can we trigger it through an API call? 
So AI Builder, because it's, it's deeply integrated in, in, in Protomate, um, it's, it's optimized so when you build flows with, with Protomate. So uh, usually uh, folks are, are using the connectors or, or, or Protomate desktop. Having said that, uh, Protomate gives you a lot of flexibility. So one thing that we have is uh, what we call the HTTP trigger. So here, for example, if I search for HTTP, we can see that we have this request uh, connector. Mm -hmm. And basically, uh, what this does is that once you build your flow, you're going to be able to trigger this flow using an HTTP uh, request. Uh, so you could uh, pull this uh, request and then call the AI Builder. Um, and then that way you can call an AI Builder model using an HTTP request. So yeah, there, there is an option yeah. using, using this, this technique here that I'm showing. Uh, there is an option to call uh, uh, AI Builder models through an HTTP endpoint. So that will actually be possible from Power Automate for Desktop. We could do it in this way to call the AI Builder with an a API call. Correct, correct. Yeah. Cool. Um, everything TikTok says, can we implement this into Navision? So that's that. That's a very good... Uh, it, so with from Navision, um, it, 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 it depends on the on the scenario and on the installation. I, I imagine it's an on-prem uh, an on-prem uh, solution. Uh, if there is API connectivity, what you can do is through a cloud flow, you can call um, you can call an HTTP endpoint and, mm -hmm. and, and push the data through that. If there's no HTTP connectivity, you can uh, use it with Protomate Desktop. So there are ways. So there's no uh, an out of the box integration with Navision uh, of AI Builder. But either through an HTTP request or through Portomy desktops, there are ways to push to push data uh, to to Navision. And uh, we've seen we've seen uh, a number of users uh, doing that with a number of, of legacy uh, and and and, and on-premise uh, CRMs. Um, so that is that is an option. Very cool, Joe. Uh, Rushab says we're doing product productive stuff and love from India. Thanks a lot. Uh, your, your support definitely help us uh, getting this video to two more. And again, if you like what you see here, if you like uh, Joe's product, AI Builder and Joe, uh, give this video a thumbs up. That will definitely help the reach of this video. So thank you. Um, now, um, let's see. What's the S asks? What's the pricing to run it in the cloud? Maybe you don't even know, Joe. Or um... so it's. Uh, a, let me give a, a high level um, overview. So to run AI Builder, you need the AI Builder credits, um, and there's a number of ways to get AI Builder credits. One is um, premium Power Automate and Power Apps licenses. Uh, some of them come with credits, and if you go to the pricing page of Power Automate and Power Apps, you will see how many credits are included on, on each of the premium licenses. And we also have what we call the AI Builder add-on, which gives you 1 million AI Builder credits. Um, and then the way to compute, so to know how many credits do you need and how many items you need, we do have a calculator. So if you search for AI Builder uh, calculator in your favorite uh, search engine, um, you should land into, into our calculator. Um, and here you can specify like, okay, like uh, how many how many pages you're going to press per month? How many? Uh, we were talking before about, about IDs. How many IDs are you going to press per month? And by filling this information, we're going to give you exactly how much uh, how much capacity you need to purchase uh, per month. And one thing I actually didn't know you. I, I think I wrote you, Joe, or uh, maybe some of, one of your colleagues was that you can always extend your trial, the AI build a trial, and then for for private use, for developing use, you can just extend it and uh, try it as much as you want. Correct. Yeah, as long as yes, if you stay for for testing purposes, you can you can extend it. Yes. Yeah. yeah so, and uh, Felix says great information learning so much, and then uh, S Doubt says um, it would be great if Power Automate can map the different values from AI Builder to Excel by itself. For example, by using the same column names like the labels in AI Builder. Uh, great, uh, David Rankov. That is a great. Uh, Maybe a future feature of Power to Make. That is a very good suggestion. I think I did like uh, our goal uh, with the AI Builder and, and the whole Power Platform is to make it uh, easier and easier uh, mm -hmm. for users to, to build solutions. So uh, indeed, that that sounds like a, a very good idea. So uh, that will simplify the process. So uh, yeah, that, that 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 could be a possible improvement. Cool. Nevita says, uh, "Can we run the flow built with Power Automate into a Power BI dashboard?" 
there is so uh, within Power BI there is a, a a visualization that's called Pro Automate. Uh, you can add it, and from there you can trigger a Pro Automate uh, flow. Um, uh, so yes, it's it, it's possible. Cool. Thanks for the question. Rashid uh, says, great session, Joe. So uh, thanks a lot. Uh, can the OCR detached PDF or merge documents, e.g. some vendors send one doc with several invoices in? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question as well. Today, So today you do need to separate the different uh, vendors. So if you have a PDF with multiple vendors, we do ask you to, to, to separate them. Uh, we do have um, a, a template that um, uh, basically what, what we recommend users to do is uh, look uh, for keywords that separates one vendor from another. And using those keywords, you can split the PDF. Uh, so there are workarounds around them. Uh, today, it does require a little bit of extra work to separate those. Uh, but this is something something that we, we are looking to, to support more easily. Uh, so this, this will also be something in, in a future update. We will be able to support uh, multiple uh, forms within the same document. Cool, Joe. This has been an absolutely nice session, especially uh, to see how advanced it was, uh, but also how easy it was to use uh, these advanced features. And uh, you were a very great presenter and answering all our questions. So it was great. really nice to have you here, and I'm sure uh, maybe in. A in a little in the future, you can come back and show us uh, maybe some of the new features as well. Definitely, I'd, 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 I'd be super super delighted. Uh, thanks a lot, Anders. It's been it's been it's been a pleasure. Again, big fan of of you and and, and your community. And yes, uh, I think uh, you do have uh, some great uh, channels. So so your YouTube videos, your Discord community. So if, if there's any questions on AI Builder, and you can think I can help, uh, let me know, and I can happy to jump into into a conversation. Thanks a lot, and um, thanks to all you viewers out there. You have been outstanding throughout the session, bringing Joe great questions so we can interact uh, and show some uh, some of the things you wanted.